Good afternoon, everybody. We bless God for this afternoon being able to come together one more time and to be able to give you a word of encouragement. This is the season where we need to be able to receive a word and be able to come together and, and trust God. And I don't know about you, but I am trusting God during this season. If you don't trust God, you will uh, become distracted, particularly by the enemy. And he uses his uh, tactics to uh, whisper things in our ear and makes us feel overwhelmed during this time of crisis and this situation. But we know that God is greater and we just have to trust him in the midst of all that we're going through and all that seems to be surrounding us. We've got to realize that God is greater. So uh, let me take a couple of minutes to say hello to those of you who are on here. God bless you, Felicia Moore. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We're going to trust God. God bless you, Dwayne Jackson. Let me go back real quick. Pearl Williams. God bless you. Monique Sirius. God bless you. Uh, Vivian Smith. God bless you. Leela O'Neill. Shronda Bell. Karen Hodo. God bless you. Felicia Moore. Amen. Again, Dwayne Jackson. Carol Waite says hi, family. Beatrice Butler uh, is with us. Hello, uh, Delmita Walken and Victory Terrell is with us. Uh, let's see. Dwayne Jackson, Catherine, Renee Fry. Uh, let's see. Gloria Musgrove, Karen Young. Amen. Wendy Drexel Marrero is with us. Bridget Johnson is with us. Amen. Valerie Dawkins Williams is with us. I always like to take a couple of minutes just to say hello because without you, I'd be here by myself. And, uh, we bless God for each and every one of you and for your time. Amen. Again, I thank God for Minister Michelle Williams, uh, Minister Michelle King for suggesting that we do this. And uh, Unique Godly, God bless you. Karen Young, God bless you. Gloria Musgrove, God bless you. And I think it's important uh, that we do this. And, and every day at 3 o'clock, except on Sundays, we dedicate this time to bring you a word, amen, and we try to make it 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or what have you, amen, but we do go by according to how the Lord leads. Thank you, Catherine. Praise God. Praise God. Valerie Dawkins Williams is in the house as well. Again, I'm just kind of looking at the time there. We've got uh, two more minutes. We're going to get started, and uh, again, I just have a, uh, a word for you, quick word for you, a word of encouragement. And we're just going to bless God, I mean, for the time. Dwayne Jackson, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Those of you who already know, it's no secret. I'm on every night, uh, every night uh, from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, teaching from the book of Revelation. And uh, tonight will be our 18th session that we will be on, 18 days in a row. And many of you have been with us almost every day. And uh, if you are not here every day, you caught up with the sessions. Latanya Bell, God bless you. And we're learning. You know, don't be scared of Revelation. I ask that you join me uh, each night from just for an hour. Sometimes we go a little bit over, but just for an hour for the most part. And uh, because there's a blessing in that. It's Revelation, first chapter and the third verse says, Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. You're gonna be blessed just by uh, being with us and getting in the book. So there's a blessing. I don't know how many of you wanna be blessed, but I wanna be blessed, so. All right, I think we're coming upon uh, five after in a minute here, and we'll go ahead and get started. And uh, Dwayne Jackson said, the book of Revelation is deep lessons. He said, I'm learning a lot. Dwayne Jackson has been with us every night. Patricia, God bless you. Amen. Monique Syria said, I used to be scared of it, but now my eyes have been opened. It's such a blessing. Again, the enemy wants to keep us away from knowledge and wisdom because wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and thought I get and get understanding. To kill a hunter, let's pray. Uh, to kill a hunter, thank you for being with us. Amen. Thank you, Karen Young, for your words, for, for your words of encouragement here. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we bless you and thank you for this time right now. We thank you for everybody who is on. And Lord, right now, somebody 
needs a word of encouragement. So we ask that you would speak to us, God, and use us for your glory. Anoint us for this task, God, in the name of Jesus. Speak through us, God, and speak through your word, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Amen. Got you, Karen. Hold on. She said, I'm driving. I can't com comment, but uh, just be careful on the road there. We love you, and we bless God for you. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is a familiar passage of scripture, and it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall, 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 direct thy paths. I want to use for a subject just for a few minutes. God is in control. We know this, but we have to constantly be reminded. Why is that? God bless you, Shante Matthew Holmes. Uh, why do we have to be reminded? Because we like to be in control. I, I, I know that you, if you just be honest for one second, you will admit that you like to be in control. And we like to be in control, and that's why this virus thing is really not working out uh, for so many of us, and it's jacking us up because we like to be in control. That's one of the reasons uh, why so many things have been askew or jacked up in our lives. And, and it could be even for some of us, some of us have learned the hard way that uh, that was one of the reasons why your past marriage didn't work. I know that's deep and I know you may not understand it, but I'll be the first to say that, uh, you know, that it was because uh, I had, I felt that I had to be control in control. Some women feel that I, I got to go deep real quick uh, and be honest. Uh, some women uh, don't realize that uh, they have this nature. Uh, God made them a rib and a rib protects the vital organs of the body, but the ribs don't make sure the, the ribs protects the, the, the vital organs, but the ribs job is not to actually make sure that the vital organs function. Let me stay right here. I didn't plan on going here real, but let me just go ahead and say this while I'm here. Uh, a woman is a rib. A rib uh, actually provides internal structure to the body and, and she uh, is, is connected to her man. And as a result, she protects the vital organs of the body. Uh, keeps them from being damaged, but her job is not to actually uh, go outside of her scope to actually make sure that the heart is pumping and that the lungs are doing what they're supposed to do and that all those internal organs, her job is just to uh, to cover the interior. And many times because of control, because of her nature, she's got to watch out because of how God made her. That rib nature, uh, many times she oversteps her bounds and she, and she ends up, uh, and it's because many times the man that she picked where uh, since you don't see the and it's just your nature when you don't see things operating properly in the home. Now you're going outside of your function and you actually start to control the man and you push him. Come on, do this, do that, move that. And when you start to do that, you step outside of the very nature that God created you. And that controlling thing ends up breaking up the marriage. Men, you feel that outside uh, you feel that your scope is control and and this this masculinity and this and and being the boss amen yes you are the head but you are not the boss of the wife and and as long as you've got this macho thing where you can't listen to your wife you will learn and, and when you end up in divorce court that if you just learn that you're not in control oh I wish I had three people here because you being in, in control I've learned the hard way because I'm the man I felt I had to uh, do everything and not listen to my rib. But the rib is there to protect the internal structure. And I'm there to physically protect her because I am. I have the strength, the outer strength. But a woman has an inner strength as a rib. And as a result, she works inside. Can't nobody on the outside see what she's doing on the inside. And she can make you look more like a man than you've ever been in your life. I didn't even plan on going here. This is not in my notes. 
She can make you look more, uh, more like a man than you could ever do yourself because God placed her to work and protect the vital organs. You are the vital organs so that body can function, but she protects the inner organs. You protect the whole outside of the body. All right. We like to be in control. Let me go back to where I was at. That's one of the reasons why many of us have difficult time with our children. We like to be in control. That's why many of us have a hard time maintaining friendships. Do you feel betrayed when others don't do what you want? Can I be on? Can you be honest with yourself? Have you ever felt betrayed when others don't do what you want? Do you wrestle with trusting people? Do you have a history of combative relationships? The drive to be in control of everything, watch this. I'm giving you a revelation here. Is driven by high levels of internal anxiety. I'm going to say it again. The drive to be in control of everything is driven by high levels of internal anxiety. See, only you can decipher this message for yourself because you know you. Do you, um, rather than address those deep-seated fears at their source, the impulse to control everything around you serves as a protective function against your feelings of vulnerability. Man, all right, that, that's not going to help you because you're not ready to receive. You're not ready to receive that yet. I'm gonna say it one more time. The drive to be in control is driven by high levels of anxiety, of internal anxiety, and rather than address those deep-seated fears at their source, the impulse to control serves as a protective function against your feelings of vulnerability. I'm trying to help somebody right now. You can only be helped if you're willing to be honest with yourself. First Peter 5 and 7 says, casting all your care, which means all of your anxieties, all of your worries, all of your concerns, once and for all upon him. For why? Why? What's the reason? For he careth for you. You've got to understand that God is in control and you've got to learn to release some things. Even during this, this season, and many of you, if you be honest, you've had anxiety during this season of COVID-19. You've had uh, 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 some worries during this season of COVID-19. You've had some concerns and you still have them. But uh, the scripture is saying you got to learn to cast uh, all your cares upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. He knows what he's doing. And ultimately, God is in control. Let's look at the amplified version of that verse. It says, therefore, humble yourselves. Low, which that means demote, lower yourselves in your own estimation. It's our own estimation that we continue to hold on to instead of just casting it and relying on God. Your own estimation is limited. You can't see the whole picture. Uh, many of us have seen uh, police officers when they're on a chase and they are chasing somebody on the ground. And if it's an extensive uh, 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 chase, Many times they have a helicopter uh, that is flying high above ground, and it's the helicopter that can really give the position. While a car, uh, the cars on the ground, uh, may, the, the, you might get lost. The person might elude you or, or leave you in the dust, and you don't know what block they're on because you can't see around buildings and stuff. But the helicopter can see a, a, a vast amount of space, uh, and, and they can see, look around and see so much more than you can see and God is ways his ways are so high above our ways he can see everything and if why don't you just uh demote your aerial view demote and lower your own estimation uh, uh, under the mighty hand of God that in due time he's going to exalt you with knowledge and he's going to exalt you out of your situation Psalm 55 and 22 says, cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. The reason why you're about to freak out and have so much trouble because you're not allowing him to sustain you. You got to cast. You got to, in order to get something, God bless you, Vincent Poole. Love you, my friend. 
in order to, God bless you, Kim Martin, love you too. In order to get something, you got to cast it. You got to, in order to get, you got to cast. I remember uh, when I was young, Jerry Seinfeld said this, I'm a Seinfeld fan. He said, you're, when you are first young, when you're young as a kid, and when you're old, your birthday parties are the same. You know, th somebody has to invite people for you and they tell you and select who are your friends. Uh, so when, you, when you're really old and they have a birthday party for you, they tell you these are your friends. When you're young and you're a kid, that your parents pick who your friends are going to be. And one of these people, uh, my, my, parent, my mother and father had invited this, um, some people over. I had one of my first birthday parties, my earlier birthday parties. And this kid uh, came to the door with his mother and he had two gifts. And I was like excited because I would greet them at the door because I really wasn't interested in really greeting them. But I was interested in what they had in their hand, the gift that they had for me. And I was in, uh, internally checking the gifts trying to see the quality of the gifts that they were bringing in, how big the gifts were. And this kid had two gift, two gifts. And I said, oh, okay, mom, you did it in my mind. I said, okay, mom did a good job by inviting this dude. And this guy had two gifts. So I went to take both gifts. And the mother said, no, uh, the one gift is for you. And the other gift is for him. Because if he don't, and he looked at, and she looked at my mother and said, if he don't, Oh, if he sees somebody else opening a gift and he ain't got a, he don't have a gift, he going to have a fit. And I said to myself, even at my young age, I said, you know what? That's crazy because you're not really teaching him how to cash. You're not really teaching him how to give. So he will never get anything if he doesn't learn how to give without looking, you know, to just to be selfish. And and I told, and, and deep down I was telling my mom I said don't invite that dude no more don't invite that guy no more with his self or self that you can't sit there it's my birthday party you know and all the gifts coming in here belong to me so you can't teach it you know if you don't learn how to cast you're not going to get anything the first step in learning how to catch fish is learning how to cast you're not going to get anything until you learn to cast. There are some things we need to learn how to cast and get them out of our hands in order to get something back. Casting involves faith. Thank you, Victoria Lynn. I, I feel like preaching, but I'm trying not to. Amen. Casting involves faith, and we all know that without faith, it is impossible. My mother, Ball, Della Ball, is on. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Let me also say that without faith, it's impossible to cast. We won't cast because of our controlling nature. We won't, we don't want to let things go out of our hands, but casting is all a part of getting. I want to say it again. Whatever you've been holding on to, I want you to know that casting is all a part of getting. There's so much greater things that God wants to do in your life, but you've got to hold, get ready to get rid of it. Let it go. You feel that you can't do nothing with those bad things. What in the world are you holding on to them for? Cast, cast, cast. You're only holding on to them because of insecurity. And you you feel like, you ever see that show Hoarders? That show Hoarders, I dare you to try to sit down and try to eat a meal, have dinner while watching Hoarders on that chair. You can't do it. It's just, it just turns my stomach. And they won't get, because of the, of the sickness and insecurity. It didn't start out like that, but little by little, the enemy has a way of getting us to hold on to things. And so much so, the enemy will have our spirits so cluttered that we'll end up holding on to stuff that is absolutely worthless to us. And there's stuff that is absolutely rotting all around us and in decay all around us because we wouldn't let it go. We wouldn't cast it. We wouldn't let God deal with it. And as a result, uh, the, the same folk, even when people try to clean up because they've been threatened to be kicked out of their homes, the health department has been called. And remember what I said about Sanford and Son, whatever is happening on the inside or the outside, 
eventually happens on the inside. So you can look at the yard and the outside of the yard is a mess. And it's because of what's going on on the inside. And because what's going on on the inside reflects on the outside. So the outside and the inside. Sanford and Son, the outside was a junkyard. And as a result, subsequently, the inside was a junkyard as well. And Lamont was trying to date people who were not impressed because the outside was jacked up and the inside is jacked up. And his dates realized that obviously there's something internal going on in here. And I can't marry Lamont or take Lamont seriously because all around him and is nothing but junk. When in the world are you going to get to learn to cast something? It was never intended for you to be in control of everything. Baby, God is in control. You got to learn how to cast. Many of us have trouble casting because our fishing rings, are, fishing reels are tangled. When your fishing reel is tangled, you can't cast, successfully cast. We have all kinds of line twists in our lives, which result in line tangles, things that we have not maintained. When you don't read your word, that is the equivalent of you. Thank you, Victoria Lynn. This is the equivalent of you not being a, keeping your, your real maintained. And as a result, when you try to cast stuff, you can't even cast it because your line, your line is tangled. When we don't pray, that is the equivalent of you not keeping your real maintained. It's all about keeping that real maintained, which, again, if you don't, it, it, it causes a twist, which results in line tangles. I want to get I want to let you know that you are not in control of everything. When we get on the airplane, we don't have access to the cockpit. Oh, I wish I had somebody here. God bless you, Glory Revel. God bless you, Dwayne. We go to our seat and we sit down. The cockpit door is closed and we have no control over the altitude. We have no control over the airspeed. We have no control over the direction or the route to get to your destination. Only thing you can do is pull out a newspaper, pull out your iPad or a tablet, read a book, listen to some music, go to sleep, eat some peanuts and chill till you get to your destination. When we get on a train or bus, it's the same thing. I used to commute to Columbia University in New York back in the day, and I rode the subway every day. I had to ride the number one or the number three train uh, every day. And as many, as many years as I rode the subway, I had never saw the conductor or the person driving the train, not one time, and never even gave it a second thought that somebody would be controlling my movements when I got on the train. I got on and I got off. As much as I wanted to be in control concerning every facet of my life, the truth is I am not in control. Ladies and gentlemen, God is in control. And if we can get on these uh, vehicles and ride without any access to the cockpit or the controls or to the function that is behind a door. We've got to trust what is behind the door. God says, I, Jesus is saying, I stand at the door and not. You got to trust him for what's beyond the door. Do you really want to play tug a rope with God? I want to ask you that. Do you really want to play tug a rope with God? I promise you, baby, if you try to play tug a rope with God, you are going to get some rope burns on your hands and in your spirit like you've never seen. If you're driving, I remember, and you find yourself going into a skid. I remember I used to live in Jersey and there were a lot of hard winters there and there was a lot of snow on the ground and on the highway. And there's been plenty of times that I've gone into a skid and I even wrecked my Mercedes because uh, I found myself going into a skid and human nature, I skidded off the road. Human nature tells you when you go into a skid to turn into the opposite direction of the skid, but that is wrong. We've got to go against our human nature really in order to uh, that's how I wrecked my Mercedes because I, I went against it and I, because I felt that I needed to be control, in control, watch this, by going against it. 
But in order to get out of a skid, you have to turn in the direction of the skid. What am I saying? In order to come out of something, you have to go against your very intellect of your nature. God is the very source of your problems, the very source of your situation. What does that mean? God is not the cause of it, but you've got to go to God uh, at the very source, right where the trouble begins. And if you turn to him, he will get you out of your skid. Sometimes when we don't pray to God about certain things, it's because we feel that whatever the situation is, we feel that it's impossible to be taken care of. And we do that as much as we say we trust God and we all have trouble with it. While we're praying, we already have doubt in, my, in our minds because the enemy is whispering in our ear telling us that the situation won't change. The situation is too big. The situation is too scary. It's too hard. It's too difficult. It's too insurmountable. And, and we, in the midst of our prayers, even though we're saying one thing, we're, we're believing something else. Matthew 19 and 26 says, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible. But with God, all things, I want you just to speak it. Say it right now. I don't care if you're driving. I don't care if you're sitting in the living room. I don't care if you're sitting at the desk. Say all things. Speak it into the atmosphere. All things are possible with God. Okay? You missed the first two words of 19 and 26. It says, but Jesus. And that's what we need. A but Jesus to interrupt our own programming of our hearts, minds, and spirits. But Jesus, I wouldn't have made it. But Jesus, I wouldn't have come out of my situation. But Jesus, uh, he said, but Jesus, that, that but Jesus means that he can transcend the impossible and make the impossible possible. Has anybody ever had a but Jesus in their life? You were on your way uh, to hell, but Jesus you were on your way to destruction, but Jesus, your life was getting ready to be in, extinguished, but Jesus, you were going to, you thought you were going to lose your job, but Jesus, you thought you were going to be kicked out of your place, but Jesus, oh my goodness. You remember the other day when I talked about Lazarus was sick and Mary and Martha sent word to Jesus that Lazarus was sick? It took a whole day for the messenger uh, that Mary and Martha sent to leave Bethany and get to Jesus where he was. So that meant that if Jesus was going to go to Bethany, it was going to take another day for him to get to get to uh, where Lazarus was. They sent word, this messenger sent word that Lazarus was sick. So that's two days right there. And Jesus, upon hearing the news that Lazarus was sick, chilled two more days. So that was four days for him to get to Lazarus. So when Jesus finally got there four days later, Lazarus was dead and Martha met him on the way and she was a little teed off. She was kind of upset and she said, hey, Jesus, yeah, it's good to see you. Uh, but if you would have been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. Now, he, this, Jesus' res response, it needs to be your response in whatever situation that's bothering you. Like the old folks say down south, whatever the situation is that's ailing you, whatever's bothering you, whatever's on your heart, mind, and spirit. Uh, Jesus said, yeah, yeah, Martha, it's good to see you. Uh, I mean, you know, Martha said to Jesus, yeah, it's good. Jesus, it's good to see you, but if you would have been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. And Jesus' response was, thy brother shall rise again. And this is what we do when we pray. We have the wrong concept of, of things. Jesus is saying, thy brother will rise again. Jesus is saying, I'm going to rise and fix your situation. I'm going to get you. But, but she responded. Uh, she said, yeah, I know the Bible. I know, I know the scriptures. I know about uh, the end times. And, you know, I've been going, I understand all of that. I know that he will rise again uh, at the resurrection in the last day. And that's how we do when we pray. Yeah, yeah, God, I, I know, you, you, you know, I, you know, but th that that we've got a misconception according to what Jesus will do and can do. But he said, nah, baby, you got it wrong. I am the resurrection. Oh, you see, she said, yeah, I know that, uh, you know, the, the resurrection, he'll rise at the resurrection in the, in the last day. And he said, baby, you got it twisted. You got to understand who you talking to. 
And that's one of the things you and I have to understand who we're talking to, who we're praying to, who we say we're serving. And that's one of the reasons why the church physically is in a sea lot because we didn't understand who we really were talking to. We didn't understand who we were really praying to. He said, nah, baby, you got it twisted. I am the, I don't have to wait to the end. I can resurrect right now. How many people know that Jesus can fix your situation and our situation? He can fix this situation in a much quicker way than we've ever even realized. Whatever your situation is, no matter how impossible it may seem, whatever you've been down about, please give God a chance and learn to cast and learn to trust. In other words, he was saying that God is in control and he raised Lazarus and told him to come forth. How many people know that God can make things that are seemingly dead come forth? Oh, I wish I had somebody here. Uh, what is it that he can't control? What is it that he cannot fix? What is it that he cannot take care of? God is in control. You can't do this alone. You can't do this all by yourself. You were never intended to do this by yourself. God is in control. Trust him. Don't doubt. Trust him. He'll make a way out of no way. Trust him. He'll heal your body. Trust him. This virus will shift. Trust him. He's going to make a way out of no way. Trust him and give him praise. Like I said the other day, the more jacked up your situation is, the more uh, you need to go ahead on and praise because it is the praise of God that is going to be the, the equivalent of the maintenance that's going to untangle your fishing reel. So that way you'll be able to cast your care. You're going to be able to get rid of it, get it as far away from you. You got to be able to cast in order to be able to get. If you don't let, if you don't cast and get rid of it, you'll never get a return from it. You'll never get anything back. Baby, you got to cast. God is in control. God bless you all. I love you. Join me tonight for Bible study through the book of, as we go through the book of Revelation. Join me tonight from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. In the meantime, baby, like that song, the secular song, don't you worry about a thing. I think it was Stevie Wonder who said that. Don't you worry about a thing. God is in control. Gloria Rebel said, I couldn't breathe right, but God is in control. Amen. He is the air that we breathe. And we're believing God in the name of Jesus for each and every one of you. For the strength to cast. The enemy will say, hang on to it. Who you are internally will tell you to hang on to it. Your controlling nature will tell you to hang on to it. God bless you, Kimberly Bowman. But God is saying that I am in control. And when you know God is in control, it's the casting gets easier. Cast it, baby, whatever your worries are. We all got, we all have concerns, but we all have got to be reminded to cast. And you got to maintain your fishing reel. Because if you get a knot in your fishing reel or a tangle in your fishing reel, you're not going to be able to cast. I love you. God bless you. Let's trust God in this season. And soon or soon, when God is ready in his time, this thing is going to shift. And even your personal situation is going to shift and it's going to change. And it's going to, you're just going to have to trust him. The three Hebrew boys, I'm done, went into the fiery furnace because they cast their cares upon him. And what did they find out when they went in there? He said, I put three people in there. I'm looking wrong. I, I'm something, something ain't going, something going, something's going on in there. Didn't we put three in there? I see one, another person, I see four in there. And one looks like the son of God. I put them in there bound. They were bound up when we threw them in there. But they're in there praising God. They're loose. And God can loose you in the midst of some of the greatest and most intense fires. God can loose you if you learn to cast. I love you. God bless you. I'll see you tonight by the help of the Lord. Try your best to be here tonight. Love you.